thanks for coming back to my YouTube channel. This is Dorothy with Dot Scrapbooking, and these are the cards that we're going to make today. Now, this is this is where I thought I was finished, um, but then I decided to, because I can't leave well enough alone, so I decided to add a little bit, and that's where I got to with the little bit of shimmer trim uh, and the pink going behind the lattice work. So... I'm going to show you how to make these braided cards, and I saw it on a, a Pinterest and just decided that's something I had to do. So I am starting with one of our new papers, um, and it is called, Four, it's the Four Seasons, and this is summer. So I thought it's nice and cheery and, uh, you know, nice for lattice work because usually vines and flowers are on lattice work. So this is the template. And I've got a link below uh, to print out this template. So you kind of cut it out from the sheet. There's like five of them on the sheet. And uh, you want to trim it real close to the line there. And then you're going to line up that line from one end of the card to the other. And secure it in place. You can secure it with, I'm using washi tape that I'm taking some of the stickum off so it's not quite so sticky. Or you could use paper clips, you know, whatever, whatever you want to use to secure your template in place. And then you are going to take really sharp, precise pair of scissors and you're going to follow the lines right to the tip of the line. And I'm using my micro-tip scissors because they are precise and they are sharp. And you can get right to that end of the line there. So you just go all the way up. And remember that the line goes against the folded part of the card. Okay, then I'm going to take my little template off. And this is what you have. You're thinking, okay. Now what you're going to do is take, start off at the bottom, and I'm using my fingernails as kind of a bone folder, and then I'm cutting off that, um, that angle. And I'm trimming the little fuzzy edges off to get it as clean as possible. That's what's good about the microtip scissors. You can really get after a little tiny detail. So then we're going to go to the next little angle and we're going to tuck it under and we're going to work our way all the way up and tuck it under. So this is kind of kind of cool. I mean you can use a bone folder. I've got I've done a what is that the dip nail polish and so my my nails are like bone folders. They're really hard right now. So I am just going to tuck all of those little corners under. And then this little piece, you're not going to throw it away. You're going to take it and tuck it under, and you're going to secure it in place with a little bit of liquid glue. And you just want to get the tips. You don't want to get the back side. Because I did that, and you'll probably see it later on. So we're just getting that angle in place. So we've got a complete... Um, lattice work all the way up and then I I cut a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of the uh, summer paper and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on with Tombow but I need to trim off some edge here so I'm just going right up to the very edge of the I'm just trying to measure where to stop the Tombow just going right up to the edge of the corners there of the lattice work and I'll trim off the excess. So it's cute paper. It's really cute paper. Very cheerful. And then I'm going to take my bone folder. I'm just looking. You can put a color back there um, to add a little bit of contrast. So I'm very carefully just going over the creases there. You don't want to run it because you can take a chance of, of ripping things up. So I'm just getting all the uh, folded parts just really tight. So that is basically the card. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put a sentiment on it. 
I had a um, bracket, a thin cut bracket that um, stitched. So I'm going to make a little card, a little, I'm going to put a little sentiment on the bracket. And the colors in this paper are from close to my heart. It's avocado, flamingo, bluebird, candy apple, capri, honey butter, lagoon, and white daisy. So you have a number of colors to choose from to contrast. I'm using the avocado and stamping Hello Friend in avocado. And I also took a butterfly from uh, another stamp set because uh, I thought this is a perfect place for a butterfly. Now this ivy, I absolutely love it. It is from um, a close to my heart uh, crisp air digital collection. So it's called Digital Art. It's under Digital Art on uh, dorothy.closetomyheart.com and it has uh, layouts, 12 by 12 layouts that go together so you get a two-page layout. There's two cards and then there's pumpkins and all sorts of, and this ivy and then a number of other figures that are perfect for autumn. Well this ivy was perfect for lattice work. So I had to print it out and it's actually two layers um, to give a little contrast along the vines of the, I mean the uh, um, stems of the leaves. So there's my butterfly and I'm going to print him, stamp him in intense black ink. And the reason why I use intense black instead of just regular is that number one it dries very quickly and you can color over it with markers or ink uh, and um, or watercolor pencils whichever you'd rather and you can color it without the black smearing so that's why I love it so much and it's a nice dark black so I'm thinking I need to add a little bit of edge to to my sentiment and so I'm just going to, I tried to just do the edge and it wasn't enough. So I'm just taking my sponge and going around, adding a little bit of avocado, um, just to add a little bit of contrast to the sentiment. And I'm going to pop it up and I'm using the insides of one of my shaker windows, one of the round shaker windows. So you get, you know, you use the outside for the shaker, but then you get all these inside pieces. So, and they're pretty tall. Uh, so it's nice to pop up, you know, whatever you can to add some dimension to your card. So I am using um, two of the Triblend markers that, that coordinate with uh, the color. So this is, it's uh, turquoise and uh, I think it's citrus yellow or a citrus green. And I'm just adding some color to the butterfly. And I decided he needed to be kind of iridescent. So I'm um, adding the colors, the green and blues. You see a lot of green and blues in iridescence. So I decided that's kind of what my, my uh, thinking was there. So I'm kind of doing it opposite on the wings and adding a little bit of turquoise to each of the, the upper and the lower part of the wing. So that's the lighter colors I've used for the wings. Now I'm using the dark turquoise to uh, color the outside edge of the wing. And I really like this. That was a In Full Bloom card making workshop that had the butterfly, that pretty butterfly. Stamp set and thin cut. And then I'm coloring his little body green. I mean, I know butterflies probably have black bodies, but this one's going to be green. My artistic license here. And I'm going to bend his wings up a little bit and go ahead and stick down this sentiment. And then I can add the butterfly just kind of going across. And I'm using one of the odd-shaped pieces from the circle because you're going to get you know, odd shape pieces. And uh, 
So I decided to, that would go good with the, holding the little butterfly in place. The other thing, you know, you can't have a card without having some glitz to it. And I had some uh, shimmer gems, glitter gems, that's what they are, glitter gems. And I was just trying out some gold and some silver, and uh, I have a pink one that is um, real pretty with, with uh, this card, I think, because it brings out the little tiny pink flowers. And so I'm just adding a few of the smaller glitter gems down the vine. Be stubborn. And I'm also going to add one at either end of the sentiment. So, I mean, who doesn't love something that's shiny, right? So, you're being a little stubborn, but you get the idea. So you just want to have a little bit of glitch. You may, maybe not. Uh, I do. And I think, you know, who I send this to will appreciate the little glitter. So there we go. And it's just enough to give a little brightness to the, to the card. And that just doesn't go well, the flower on the inside of the, of the lattice work. So I'm thinking I'm done here, but I'm not. You'll see later. So that's my first lattice work card. And then I'm going to um, go to another way. Oh, I got a piece of avocado. And see, the avocado just doesn't quite, it's, it's not enough of a contrast. So... I keep on trying, and that's what you do. You know, when you're scrapping or card making, you know, you try this and you try that, and you, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, sometimes it's just trials. Okay, so now I cut a piece uh, that is two and a half inches by five and a half, and I am going to do uh, the same same thing, but... I'm going to use this lattice work in a different way. And so I'm, once again, putting the line against the folded edge and securing it in place, folding over the edge. And I'm securing it in place with some washi. You can secure it however you want to. You want it to be removable, though. I disappeared. Where did I go? Okay, so here I am cutting out the, once again, the, the uh, folded edge has the line, and then you're cutting with a very sharp, very precise pair of scissors right up to the edge of the line. And you want to be precise about this because you want your, your angles that fold down to be the same length on the whole card. You want your cuts to be exactly the same. So there's another template. That way, I don't know that they can get used very, very easily. It's probably best to just use a new one. So there we go. And once again, folding down giving it a good sharp crease, and cutting it off with my scissors. And then trimming, trimming any little fuzzy, imprecise edges off. There we go. And here we go. We're folding down, creasing, and tucking. Folding down, creasing, and tucking. And folding down, and creasing, and tucking. I just love this idea of making this lattice work. There's, so this is my second lattice work card. And I have something in mind for a third one. Uh, 
but it's not going to be on this video. It'll be another video. Okay, so here I've got my little piece that I cut off, and I'm just tucking it under, and I'm thinking, well, let me just use Tombow on it, and I put Tombow all over it, which was not a good idea. But you know, sometimes you think and sometimes you don't. So this is why you don't want to do that, is because then you've got glue, so when you fold it together, <laughs> it'll be stuck together. So I'm taking this little magic tool that I have um, it, that is a, a glue, perfect for erasing glue. It just pulls it right off better than you're rubbing it and rubbing it with your fingers. So that's also a tool that's on close to my dorothy.closetomyheart.com. Okay, so here's my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, my A2 card. And it's another piece of the summer paper that's in the new, this is in the new core catalog. We have two catalogs active right now, the July through September catalog, which is a seasonal catalog. And then we've got the annual, what is called our core catalog. And all of the tools and, and uh, full line of embellishments and colors are in the core catalog. So that little eraser and that little sponge, I get those sponges. They're like $1.49 each. They're a round sponge, and I cut them into eighths. And uh, so, you know, I get a lot of use out of them. And if they can't, you know, if they just get too too thick with ink, then I throw it out and use another one. So I decide that that isn't enough. I've got to put more on there, so I'm tapping on there. And that's what also you can do with the sponge, is you can give kind of a dotted look along with that distressed edge. So I did that thinking it was a good idea. What can you say? Sometimes... Sometimes what's in your head just doesn't really work out. And you know what? That's too darn busy. <laughs> and don't worry about it if it doesn't work. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking it. See, I really don't like the way that looks. And I think, can I? how can I fix it? Can I put some, you know, avocado paper behind it or uh, darker green behind it? So then I just decide to flip it over and make sure that it's got a, you know, a distressed edge. And I like that better. And then my ivy is going to go on there, just like that. So this is going to be a very similar card to the first one that I made. But it's just that I made so many of those ivies because I really love it. That that um, this digital art, I, get, I always get the digital art um, for each of the paper collections because it really coordinates with the paper collections. And it's got the shapes that are on your, your papers. And it allows you to do a lot without, um, you know, of kind of your own creation. So, you know, it's art that helps you, you know, making your, your crafting easier. If you have a Cricut, if you have and you love your Cricut. So, and using design space, that's the other thing. Okay, so I'm just going to put one of my blocks on there and let it dry. So it's going to sit there and dry. And in the meantime, I'm kind of going through some of my stash to pick out things to go with the other card. And I decide I went to get some of the Flamingo card stock, found a piece in my stash, and trimmed it down, and just decided to fill the whole inside of the card with a piece of Flamingo. And then I'm going to trim it off. And I really, see, I really like the way the flamingo looks behind. There's some Tombow showing, so I, that'll come off uh, at some point with that little eraser job of mine. Um, anyway, I, the, the, pl the flamingo looks so much better than the avocado did or the print. I decided I liked it so much, I lifted up my lattice work on this one and put it behind <laughs> There, because it really, it looks neater that way. It just doesn't look so confusing, and it makes the lattice stand out, in my opinion. So I'm going to do a Thinking of You card, and this is another stitch bracket that we have. 
And that's also from the core catalog. So I'm going to go ahead and once again use my avocado ink stamp pad to stamp thinking of you. And when you're stamping, you want to hold your stamp in place for at least a count of three to five so you can get all of the ink to absorb into the cardstock. I just was using my little microfiber cloth to clean off my stamp and put it back on the uh, carrier sheet so I don't lose it. Because that's a, that's a really nice thinking of you, isn't it? That came from um, a stamp set that came with the uh, card subscription. Whoops. Um, with each card subscription, you get a stamp set that covers lots and lots of different, uh, it's lots of sentiments that cover different occasions. So it, they're very handy to have around. So there's my thinking of you. And I didn't just stress it. You know, I just decided to leave it, leave it plain. I kind of went wild with the stressing. And the little, my little pink glitter gems looked so perfect with that. They're uh, just, I don't know which pink it is, but it's a light pink. Like blush or one of those. So anyway, I'm running them once, once again down the ivy. Just because I love the way that looks. And I'm going to put two, two of them on the bottom of the little sentiment tag. So, there we go. So I'm happy with this card too. I like the lattice on the edge and I like it in the center. So it just gives you a different, a different look. I've got an extra frame in there. <laughs> That's another thin cut. Um, anyway, so those are my, those are my two cards, and yet I think I'm done here. It looks like I'm done. I'm thinking I'm done. And then it's like, at some point, too much is, is not enough. And so I hope if you, um, haven't subscribed that you subscribe to my, uh, YouTube channel and let me share stuff that I've learned. So see, too much is not enough. So I had a piece of flamingo shimmer tape hanging off of my camera arm above my head and I thought, let me put that to use. So there goes a piece of flamingo shimmer trim down the edge and I trimmed off like barely an eighth of an inch off of the edge of the card so that the uh, shimmer trim would show up even better. And then I got this, uh, I just got this um, a, the day before I was making these cards. And this is a double pack stamp set that is just loaded with all of these wonderful sentiments. Um, you, it's just, you can read them. Uh, you were on my, my mind today, so I thought I'd send a hug your way. I didn't forget your birthday. I'm just extending the celebration. That's for me because I always get birthdays wrong. So I'm going to put this um, sentiment and I've got to put it on my two by three block. And so it's going to go on the two by three block and I'm going to stamp it. I'm actually going to stamp it in the intense black. So I'm seasoning the stamp. That's called seasoning. You're just getting off excess oils and debris that might be on the stamp. Um, and you only have to do it the first time. And then after that, it's a seasoned stamp. So I'm, it's not quite. So you just have to, you want it before you go stamping, even though you seasoned it, you want to make sure that, number one, you get a good stamp on a scratch paper and you put your little foam piece from the stamp set below whatever you're stamping so that you have something to squish into and then hold it in place you're on my mind and in my heart so isn't that pretty and then this one I'm going to use just a little hay to brighten your day I think that's the one I'm going to use so I'm going to clean off this stamp with my microfiber cloth. 
and put it back. It's easy to lose stamps. They're clear, and so you can misplace them pretty easily. Okay, so go ahead and season it, and then stamp it, and I'm thinking I'm stamping it in black. I need a new, a wetter stamp. I'm running out of ink on my on my intense black because I use it. Oh my gosh, I use it so much. So, and we have reinkers uh, to refill your stamps. They really last forever, though. But I do a lot of stamping. So I decided I'm going to use to just make it a little bit softer inside. I'm going to use the avocado ink. Just a little hay to brighten your day. See, I needed to hold that in place a little bit longer. It's not perfect, but nor nor am I. And I've become okay with that after all these years. So there's my two cards that they are finished now. So I hope you like them. Try it. It's fun. Bye. Hi, I'm Dorothy Smith. Thanks for watching my video. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel and learn along with me. Thanks. Bye-bye.